Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to our third half hour segment of Vaughan and Vivo. As you know, my name is Richard Vaughan and my job is to teach you English. And of course, your job is to help me. And if the more you help me, the more you will learn English. Now, I'm a bit nervous now because at the beginning of my last half hour, people told me I was going to have a very special guest, a surprise guest. Now, as you know, I have Sony on my left. How are you, Sonia? Fine, thank you. Yeah, do you know our surprise guest? Do no. you recognize our surprise yeah. guest? Yeah, I recognize okay. her. Okay, because sitting on my right is a person who shares, I'm sure, many of my values and many of the um, aspirations and dreams I have, professional, here in the community of Madrid. And she, and I've watched her in her, in the, in the things she has done to help promote the language that I have been trying to teach and help you learn for the past 34 years. And she has come, and for me it's an honor, and it's very a privilege to have somebody here to help me convince you how important the English language is and how now in this country finally steps are being taken in the right direction, in my opinion, to solve this problem. So with me, it's sitting on my right, is Esperanza Aguirre. It's a pleasure. And to have you here, Esperanza. Thank you very much, Richard. And I hear people have been telling me, this is the first time I have met you, but people have told me that you speak English. Is it true? I do speak English, but I don't practice, so maybe okay. I don't speak it very fluently. But how old were you when you started to speak English? Or started uh, to learn I went English? to a British school here in Madrid and started when I was six. All right. And I stayed there only t until 11. Well, but, but from six to eleven, those years were very, very important for me. Okay, you, for the language and for the education. Yeah. For both things, because I only got the language or the grammar without having noticed that mm -hmm. <laughs> I was <laughs> at that moment learning grammar. I was learning a language, uh, as all the kids in my classroom. But also the values there were important. But I, did you know any English when you started at no, age six? Nothing. So for you, it was a shock the first days, the first no. month. It wasn't a shock. The teachers spoke there some very strange thing. We thought the Spanish uh -huh. children were there, but uh, okay. more or less we started to understand what they said. And then, as you progressed in your mm -hmm. in academic life and then starting your professional life, uh, was English, has English been a useful tool for you? Yes, it has been very, very useful. That's why I think it is my duty as the president of the Madrileños, I am the responsible of the education of the Madrileños to promote the bilingual teaching here in Madrid. Not only in the private schools for the parents that can pay for it, but also or especially in the what we call public schools, which is the contrary of what the Brits uh, call a public yes. school. Yes. The sc state schools, it's not mm -hmm. state now, we should say community schools. Right. I want them also to be bilingual, so people uh, with families that have no money to pay for a private school can learn English and can, can be taught in English. That's a very Which ambitious. is the difference, mm -hmm. except for Spanish and maths, the rest of the subjects subjects are taught in English. So hi history or science subjects, biology? All of them. Okay. All of them. And that means a very important commitment of the parents, of course, but also of the teachers. How many years have you been doing this now? For the, this is the fifth one. Okay. The, the five years I, I have been the president of this community. It's a, that's a tough project. That's very ambitious. And it's not easy. It is very ambitious. We, we said in the first four years, for the first term, we will have uh, 110 bilingual public schools and we have 147 now. And, and we're still growing. We want, we want teachers to be committed because they have to go to England or to Ireland or to the States or be here in a very, very, very tough program mm -hmm. learning their English because most of the teachers are Spanish. Then we have mm, conversation uh, people, young people that come here that are natives, mm -hmm. but of course teachers of science, of history, of geography, they're all Spaniards. That's right. So, mm -hmm. And so it's a double challenge because not only teaching the young children to speak and understand English, but then you need the teachers 
more or less to fall in love with the language, to enjoy it of and course. want to teach the geography. Of course. And That's the, what we require to a school to, be, uh, to, to have the application to be bilingual next um, year, mm -hmm. and so um, they will get more money from the government, mm -hmm. is that the 80% of the teachers are committed to mm -hmm. learn more English. Okay, and what is the horizon on this? How many, El Horizonte, how, what do you... The horizon, we started uh, with the six-year-olds at mm -hmm. the first course of the, the first um, primary, mm -hmm. and uh, we are now starting with the, what we call the institutos de secundaria, the secondary schools, right. high schools. They high say schools the in the U.S., yes. yes, from about age 14 to 18 or 15 and to 18. Here they start at 12. Okay. That's a secondary school, more mm -hmm. than high school, which is middle school and high school, ah, yeah. junior high and high. Mm -hmm. And the results so far, are you optimistic? I'm very optimistic because the, here we want the parents uh, to be able to choose what kind of education they want for the children. Mm -hmm. Our constitution allows them to choose. And one of the, of the ways they can choose if they are selecting a public school, a state-run school, is to be bilingual. And then um, the applications of the parents have grown over 40 percent. Is that right? If the school is bilingual. So parents are completely convinced that English is important in this globalized world we're living in. So you think you're working as much, not only with students and with with uh, teachers, parents. but also with the parents. Yeah, of course, of course. And the parents uh, have also to be committed. But you see, public schools cover many different social classes, yeah. social areas, and you're finding... Even very different nationalities. Yes, especially But now they all need English. And, mo and the parents agree with this. Of course. So the public bilingual schools are becoming quite popular. Very popular. What is your objective on number of schools in the community of Madrid? I have no objective in numbers. When I make the commitment, I said each 50,000 people, mm -hmm. there must be at least one bilingual school. But if there are more um, cloisters, we say cloisters, mm -hmm. I don't know, the, well, the, the group of teachers that are yeah. in the same school, uh, have the application and there's more than 80% of them that want to be bilingual, mm -hmm. we will give them uh, this qualification. And have you started in preescolar, going before? Yes, yes, but um, um, we always start in preescolar. Those are not always in the curriculum, okay. but we want three-year-olds to start with English. But when you started five years ago, at what age did you begin? Six. Age, year six. Mm -hmm. And so you move, you're moving forward. Yeah. But your, is your idea to formalize moving backwards yes, as well? Yes, also backwards. I understand. When you are three years old, you don't have to make any effort. That's true. <laughs> uh, people that are listening to you mm -hmm. and learning English through this uh, very, very good classes you mm -hmm. give here, um, they will be astonished if they knew how different it is to start when you are a little oh, boy true. or a little girl. Well, my children, I, your children, I don't know, but I'm sure my children had two, two languages at home simultaneously, mm -hmm. and they never questioned. Of I course. always spoke English, my wife always spoke Spanish, and my children, when they were three and four years old, they thought that all papas spoke one way and all mamas spoke another, and they <laughs> never questioned these yeah, things. Yeah, of course. That's where, I think in the public education, that's a, a very good place to attack, because they never question anything. It things. is, and it makes such a great difference, openness uh, to another language, to another culture, even people, even children that are not Spanish-born and they don't have uh, the Spanish language as their first language or as their mother's language, English is important for them. Think of the Romanians, the Bulgarians, uh, mm -hmm. and many other nationalities that are here in Madrid. When I was a little girl, we, I was the eldest of eight brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And we had a f teacher of French every day at home. Okay. We went to a British school and we were Spanish. And I have always said, only thanked my parents to give this importance so to the So they had languages. the discipline to keep you in contact? Yes, yes. But you know, working in, in the political world, that's basically a national function. Uh, although some, some politicians and, and people work with foreign 
mm -hmm. a, a lot of foreigners. But basically, you don't need English in the political world. Have you needed English in your life? Have you needed Sometimes to use it? Sometimes. Need. Need is a very, very <laughs> special word, but it has been very useful for me. When did you find it specifically? Every when was the time, first time? When I went to an international meeting or to a meeting uh, overseas or uh, in a foreign country, English is so useful. French is also, but mm -hmm. now English is... Uh, international uh, language. Yeah. International language, exactly. It's the lingua mm -hmm. franca for... Mm -hmm. Maybe for the entire century. Once we decided not to choose Latin in the European Union, yeah. now English is now the lingua English. franca. And it's, it's, on the one hand, it's, it's good for me, of course. It pr provides mm -hmm. me with a livelihood. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a Germanic Anglo-Saxon language, which is quite difficult for Spanish people, for Latin people, to learn. Mm, Germanic, Anglo-Saxon, yeah, but uh, grammar is easier than... French grammar, for example. And Spanish grammar. And Spanish grammar. Basic Spanish grammar yeah. for me took three or four years to master. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But when, did, when do you remember the first time that you were thankful you knew English? Was there any moment in your, was it at the university or when you, in your first jobs? Did you need English specifically? Uh, well, when I, I took a competitive examination to become a civil servant at the National Ministry of Tourism, Mm -hmm. The rest of the people that were there, the young uh, pupils, had to take lots of time learning English. Right. And, I, and did you pass the exams? I passed it, yes. <laughs> I became a civil servant. Yeah. Okay. And using English in the political world with your friends and colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, are there many who speak English as well as you? Um, um, I don't speak English with my <laughs> Spanish colleagues. But, no, but uh, you observe uh, them. When I go to Germany or to Sweden or to all the northern, uh, the northern countries, mm -hmm. or uh, the rest of the countries except for the French, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Francophonie, <laughs> uh -huh. the rest of them English is very, very useful. Okay, and do you think the, um, mm -hmm. the, what you're doing now in the community can be extrapolated to the rest of Spain? To I, I think so. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. uh, this could be a good example for some of them. Uh, there are other communities in which um, they have another official language, mm -hmm. uh, say Catalan or Basque or Gallego, and they make great efforts for these languages, which is okay and very good. But I think they should also take care of English. Okay. It is well, of important. course I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they're not, for example, some people in those communities that are, don't know Spanish as well as their parents did, mm -hmm. and then they could become monolingual in a language which is not spoken outside of the community. So I always believe English and Spanish should be mm -hmm. always on the curriculums everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, in the current campaign, do you find, are there many foreigners coming in observing the campaign in which you need to use your English? I, I am not in this uh, national campaign. I had my own mm -hmm. campaign at the regional level in, mm -hmm. the, in the month of May. And yes, I did some interviews for the uh, mm -hmm. foreign television, some in English, some in French, and uh, they were mm -hmm. observers, of course. And this, this um, initiative now of Aprending uh, Lestuve, do you think it can help? What's of your... course. I think your program is fantastic. Uh -huh. It's very important for yes. everyone. The parents, especially. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, our, here our main objective is not necessarily to teach English. We're 24 hours a day. But it's to expose the people to English and to make them begin to like the language. Uh, we try to make our programs fun, stimulating, entertaining, and... What about music? Some of my friends started and learned English very well through the Beatles at that yes. time. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of Spanish through uh, literature and through music as well. Mm -hmm. And some, my, the French I know is through uh, French Jacques Brel. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, in your... Um, Films mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are also very useful to learn a language. But I think you're making the right decisions because a lot of people believe, and I don't necessarily agree, when they say the movies in Spain are dubbed, doblados mm -hmm. al español, and if they were in the original version, it would be much easier for Spaniards to learn. However, in many countries where they don't dub uh, American or British films, 
People I, don't go they, to see well, well, other films. But also, they, the English level is not high. Mm -hmm. You go to Turkey, and in Turkey, they don't dub. And the Turks don't speak English mm -hmm. better than the Spaniards. Where I have found a good level of English in the country, the Scandinavian countries, mm -hmm. Holland. That is perfect. It's the educational system. I think it's been so. the educational system from primary school mm -hmm. or from even preschool mm -hmm. uh, up through university. There has always been a, a strong emphasis on, mm. um, on the and English music. language. Don't forget music. Young people love music. And have you found, have you found in your project for the English mm -hmm. uh, public schools, have you found much opposition to that or much um, skepticism? Skepticism, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Opposition is always skeptical <laughs> about <laughs> what government is going to do. But now I think they will back the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, ask, ask Sonia if she speaks English. Sonia. A little bit. <laughs> Where did you learn your English? I learned my English in Bonn. In Bonn bon systems. With yeah. us. In Bonn. Mm -hmm. Bonn. Bonn like, systems. When I started uh, to ah, Bonn, I thought Baugen. Bonn, the bon old systems. capital of Germany. No. Ah, no, no. No, but you see, the name mm -hmm. Baugen, uh, like mm -hmm. the, is, uh, in English we say Bonn. Mm -hmm. But in Spain I always say Baugen. Mm -hmm. And um, ask her if she has had many classes on the television. Is it your first class? Uh, no, it's my third class. Third class. You speak very well. No. Her grammar is perfect. <laughs> her her basic She said grammar. learned and she said third. <laughs> she said it well. Well, yeah. we have to work on all of the uh, different aspects, we have to, especially the ear. The because, ear, that's um, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, in the uh, project, in your initiative for mm -hmm. the public schools, uh, the children will be exposed to English, a lot of English, in every coin, geography and history, etc. Uh, not always to beautiful accents, I must say. I know. But mm -hmm. in the end, by the sheer accumulation of hours, which could reach 1,000 hours of exposure, 1,500 hours, over a period of several years of hearing the language constantly, three mm -hmm. hours, four hours a day, in the end it opens the ear. But it's not only in school. That's what I want to say very clearly, films, television, mm. CDs, CDs, music, all that for the children is very important, internet. And do you think the public administrations can foment that and promote? Of course, that's what, what we are doing. I'm one of the public administrations. <laughs> yes, yeah. and so you are, in addition to the schools, mm -hmm. your visit to the, our Aprending Les Tuve, and uh, do you have other initiatives in mind right now? I also have, we have a public uh, channel of TV, Telemadrid, mm -hmm. where I want the um, dibujos animados. The say. cartoons. The cartoons, I want them to be um, in English. That's good, perfect. because that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Because children, starting at about mm -hmm. 18 or 20 months, they begin to sit in front of, t of televisions, mm -hmm. and they are hypnotized by the animation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if they're speaking in, in mm -hmm. German, Chinese, Spanish, or English. They remain in front. Mm -hmm. So it's a, they are a captive audience, and they are a sponge. And they don't say, That's Mommy, true. cambialo al español. They don't Absolutely say that. Absolutely true. <laughs> so uh, that would be mm. very good. Is, have, okay. you, have you received any um, input from uh, private schools or concertados? About yes, concertados want also to be able to be bilingual, that means giving money to concertados, which we are going to do this year, precisely. Okay, so you'll be expanding mm -hmm. beyond the public school? Yeah, the, the, the privados concertados. Uh, we have okay. this system which is not private, not public, but... Uh, in between. In between, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. And how many, do you, how many schools do you project would be included in this? I, I don't want to give... Uh, uh, a number because it is difficult. We were projecting to have 110 and now we have 147. It will depend how many schools will have 80% of the cloister saying we want to be bilingual. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's check just very quickly. I want to, I want, so, Sonia, I want to check your English. Okay. Ask Esperanza if she studied law. If she studied, studied law. law. Derecho. Okay. Uh, did you study law? Yes, okay. and this is one of the matters, uh, one of the, the, the careers in which uh, English is not so useful because it is different law in, in the United mm -hmm. States, in, in Britain or in Spain. 
Yes, it's uh, here you have Roman Nevertheless, law. Nevertheless, we have Roman law, or the Napoleonic Code, mm -hmm. yeah. and you have the common law. Okay. Nevertheless, uh, principles are always important. Okay. You have something of the Roman law in the principles. We also. do. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. And uh, ask her if she studied English during her law degree. Uh, did you study English? Uh, study. A study English? During? During degree. The degree? The degree. Uh, yes, uh, I studied during the summers. One of the summers I went to Cambridge, to the Bell School of Languages, mm -hmm. which uh, we had a great time there. How long were you <laughs> All the pupils there were one month, mm -hmm. five weeks or six. And another summer I went to the United States. Oh. I lived in a family there. Where in the States did you go? I went to Harrisburg in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. That's a the capital. Little, at Harrisburg is the capital, but we lived in a very small village there that was called... Oh, I, can I forgot that. Uh, is that near uh, the Amish area? Uh, where the... Susquehanna was the name of the river. The river. Yeah. It's a famous river. Right? Yeah, very yeah. famous. Huh? And um, uh, there we, I lived in the house of... Um, uh, um, member of the post office, a postman, I must say. A postal say. service, yeah. Yeah, and um, with two children there. How, so, how old were you when uh, you were there? I was older than the, than the children. I was um, 19 or 20, okay. maybe, and the children there were 12 and 14. That was your first contact with the American accent after being uh, in the British yes, school? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Did you have trouble? Very much it? trouble. For example, <laughs> <laughs> the car. The car was a... Um, uh, the, the, the bus was continental. Okay. I, I am used to hear continental. Of course, uh, continental. Continental. <laughs> <laughs> the car was, um, uh, what's it, the brand of this uh, American brand, very... Lincoln Continental. Mm, was no, not Continental. Uh, another one that was also but you skipped <laughs> half <laughs> of the word. Chevrolet or... Chevy. Oh, the Chevy. Yeah. All right. But how long were you in Harrisburg, in Pennsylvania? Um, I was about one and a half months. Okay, during mm -hmm. the summer. During the summer, July and half of August. Studying or simply no, living no, with the family? No, simply living with the family. Okay. They had, uh, the grandfather was making hamburgers right. and I helped there. Fine. So. Do you think that type of experience is something that the public administrations in Spain could foment? And it is very, very useful from my point of view and we foment that because the exchange of a way of life so different Madrid than a little village in Pennsylvania. Uh, so you was a positive... Sealands Grove was the name. How Sealands could I Grove. Forget? I've yeah. never heard of it. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a very small village. Yeah. Okay. All right. And have you ever gone back to visit the no, family? No. You not haven't. even to Harrisburg. <laughs> well, no. Harrisburg, it's not easy to go there. But, yeah. and, um, but in any case, uh, so you are optimistic that in the future, in future governments, that it's very probable that uh, more efforts will be made uh, to, so. to promote the English language. I think so. It's very important. Young people now speak English in a percentage a lot bigger than when I was a little girl. Yes. However, mm. when I came, I came in 1974 and mm -hmm. I began to teach. And I found that perhaps in the Polytechnica, for example, maybe only one percent of the graduating students had a good level of English. And yeah, maybe now you would be surprised in the Polytechnica because all, all the books they have, they are in English. Maybe they don't have a good level of conversation, but they understand everything of the scientific yes. uh, materials they have there. Yes, but I know many of them, and I must insist that we have to make an effort, public and private mm -hmm. entities, to foment what is the active usage of the language, because many doctors, most doctors, mm -hmm. especially leaders de opinion in the, the mundo medico, they can read, but then when they go to their congresses and conventions, they have big problems. So yeah, It's not easy. I know. And so you're... To give a lecture in a language course. which is not yours. <laughs> and to attend mm -hmm. workshops and symposia. And so your presence here with us mm -hmm. uh, is very important. Well, thank you. And, and I'm, uh, I would be here every time you call me. Okay, and because we are trying to take English into the living room of every home and mm. active verbal English. 
And okay. Ellen, uh, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I okay. used to, to what he says. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay, well, we will be back in just a few minutes for the last half hour of Algo Vivo. All right. Thank you very much.